This program is sponsored in part by the League of Women Voters of Pennsylvania, a statewide nonpartisan grassroots organization that believes through informed action, people can make profound changes in their communities. We're joined today by Al Schmidt, Pennsylvania Secretary of the Commonwealth. We're here today to talk about no excuse mail-in voting. What is the benefit of, of this no excuse mail-in voting? Well, it was really a significant step taken in 2019, uh, passed by a Republican House and a Republican Senate and signed by a Democratic governor. So it was bipartisan legislation that improved accessibility for voting in Pennsylvania, which means that if you choose to vote, you can either still vote at the polls on election day, or you could vote by mail. You have to apply and you receive your ballot in the mail that you can complete at your convenience and then return to your board of elections. Has the availability of no excuse mail-in voting impacted the number of Pennsylvanians that actually go to the polls to vote? Well, it's always hard to tell. Like turnout rises and falls largely based on competition. So if there's not a lot of competition in a primary or a general, turnout is generally lower. Um, but there's no doubt that it makes voting more accessible. If you're a firefighter, if you're a police officer working a 12 hour shift from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., it's very difficult to vote on election day. If you're a nurse or a doctor or two jobs or uh, have a parent you have to take care of or kids you have to take care of, voting on election day can be a challenge for people. So this really improves the accessibility of the process by giving people more time. What is the benefit of having a more engaged uh, electorate that, that is involved in their elections? Well, you, you, you want every eligible voter to register to vote and every registered voter to cast their vote and have their vote counted. In our system of government, in our representative democracy, it's up to the people to decide who represents them. So you want as, it, to improve turnout so that you know people can make their voice heard and they're appropriately represented, whether it's president of the United States or a, a township uh, commissioner. Let's talk about how the process works. How does someone obtain a no excuse mail-in ballot? In Pennsylvania, you apply uh, you can apply electronically at vote.pa.gov uh, and or by a paper application to your county. And then if your application is approved, you'll be sent a ballot in the mail. To apply for a mail-in ballot, you have to include your social security number or your driver's license number to est establish your identity before a ballot is sent out to you. Specific dates vary every year, but what are the rough time frames of when no excuse mail-in ballots become available to voters? They can be sent out as early as 50 days before election day, but sometimes you see a lot of back and forth in the courts where there's a challenge over whether a candidate can or can't appear on the ballot, and that sometimes delays the process, but you generally want them out at least three weeks before election day. I ran elections for 10 years in Philadelphia County, and that time is really important. You want voters to have enough time to get their ballot, to finish their ballot, and to return it. And if it's through the mail, sometimes that can take uh, a few days. When your mail-in ballot arrives in the mail, what's all included in that parcel? You receive a packet of information that will include the instructions, that will include your ballot, that will include two envelopes, one called a secrecy envelope and one called a declaration envelope. And all that is intended to ensure that your vote is, is private. Uh, and separates your ballot from who you are, your vote from who you are. So, you know, there's been a lot of controversy about mail-in ballot voting. You see a lot in the newspapers with lawsuits and all the rest, but it's very simple. And if you follow the instructions, uh, it's, it's not a difficult process at all. So I'd encourage people who who would prefer to vote by mail for one reason or another uh, to do so and not be dissuaded from it because of any of the sort of back and forth nonsense they might see in the news. Let's talk about filling out your ballot step by step. So the first thing someone wants to do is read the instructions and fill out the ballot back and forth. What other guidelines should they keep in mind in filling out that ballot? Well, we've prepared instructions that all counties will include in their uh, ballot packet that really walk through the process from beginning to end. So you're going to complete your ballot. You're going to insert your ballot 
when you're when it's completed in a secrecy envelope. Insert that yellow secrecy envelope in an outer envelope and sign it and date it. And that's really a very important part of this is you have to sign and date your envelope when returning it. And that establishes um, that, it, that it's you. So then we return the completed ballot to the county election board. How does someone determine where exactly to return the, the ballot? So your ballot materials will have the address on it for where it gets returned to. So you can, if there's enough time, obviously you can put it in the mail to return it to your board of elections, or you can return it in person to your county courthouse where your board of elections has an office. Or if you live in one of the many counties in Pennsylvania that have mail-in ballot drop boxes provided by the Board of Elections, you can return it to a drop box, which returns it directly to the Board of Elections. What is the deadline to return your ballot? By 8 p.m. on Election Day, and that's really important. Postmarks don't matter when it comes to mail-in ballots. So, you know, you it, it, it would be, it's not a good idea to put it in the mail Monday before Election Day, which is on Tuesday. Certainly not on Tuesday by, by any means. But the, the ballot has to be back to the Board of Elections, either through the mail or through the Board of Elections office or through a drop box by 8 p.m. on Election Day. How can a voter determine whether or not their mail-in ballot was counted? So if you provide, um, for example, when you apply for a mail-in ballot, you have the opportunity to include your email address. And that will provide updates to you at every step in the way. You can actually track the progress of your ballot, whether it's returned, whether it's counted, and, and all the rest. And that's an improvement, addition, an important addition to improve the transparency of the process. In recent years, there's been concern over, over the fairness of elections. What is your agency doing to help uh, give the, the sense of security that these concerns are being responded to? Since 2020, since the primary of 2020, beginning with the primary of 2020, uh, elections in Pennsylvania have never been more safe and secure. There's a paper ballot record for every vote that's cast, whether it's by mail or in person at your polling place that's used in two audits after every election to ensure that the tabulated results are accurate. So it was a it was a heavy undertaking for the counties to prepare for the 2020 election. They did it successfully. And that's why Pennsylvania is fortunate to have such free, fair, safe and secure elections. Secretary Al Schmidt, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. This program is sponsored in part by the League of Women Voters of Pennsylvania, a statewide nonpartisan grassroots organization that believes through informed action, people can make profound changes in their communities.